Hey everyone, welcome to the Industry Show. I'm your host Nitin Bajaj, and joining me today is Vipul Agarwal. Vipul, welcome on the show. Hi, thank you, Nitin, for inviting me here. It's always been pleasure to talk to you. you Likewise, like? Vipul. Yeah. We're glad to have you here. Let's get started with who is Vipul. It, it, it's someone who doesn't give up easily, uh, or someone who doesn't give up at all. Uh, like I myself, I come from a tier tier two, tier three town. You know, have made my journey from there to here, and completely on my own. I uh, started my career with a call center. Had given fifty odd interviews to get my first job. Landed back in two thousand ten, mm-hmm. uh, which again I got fired from in a couple of months. So back to ground zero with really no money to pay my tuition fees and the chances to getting into college was super slim. And uh, that's that's where I end up on dropping a good top B Tech college because I know I can't afford that uh, the fees over there. But still continued like I had to study, did my maths on us. I think very small fee uh, at that time. Uh, been a teacher for almost uh, seven eight years. Uh, been able to teach more than five hundred odd students, and that's how I my little sustained my career. Uh, and back in again uh, 15, 14, 15, while doing my masters. I think I had a good opportunity of joining a big like at that age. I think that was a very good job for me to sustain myself. But again, decided not to go there and get into a startup, you know. And that's where the startup journey started. So every time when life seems stable, I kind of jump out, take another leap, and that's what made me who I am. So someone who like taking a risk and not getting stabilized, uh, you know, into a job environment per se. I would say. Uh, but yeah, uh, like I, I don't give up easily. So that that's who I am. That's what defines me. In the true spirit of, spirit of entrepreneurship, right? And yeah. uh, so tell us about Unlu. You know, who, what is it? How did you get started with it? Who's your ideal customer? And and of course, you know, the size and scale of the operations. Uh, what kind of fundraising? So just just kind of walk us through. You know, what led to its beginning. And uh, where are you now? So yeah, I think uh, with with Onlu, it's been an amazing uh, opportunity. Something which I wanted to do uh, like forever. It's been like going back to the to my story. I think that the biggest challenge I had when I start something is that how I'm I'm, I'm gonna make any sort of money, you know, to sustain myself. And I wish like if ten years back we had such opportunities like an internet, you know, where a content creator can just simply go out and make some sort of content money. It would have been uh, amazing for people like us, you know, who really want to achieve something. And given that those opportunities lies today, the idea remains very same that can I make the life of folks easier, you know, by making them, enabling them to get this money, to earn this money by using the power that they have. Like, and it's irrespective of the location they are in or the study that they did, right? You can be in tier three town, you hardly have to do any study, but if your creative mind works right, you can simply go start making, uh, uploading content and makes money. And that's where the idea of Onlu started. Uh, I was doing the similar thing back in 17 also in my second startup, which was mostly in cricket. Uh, we used to invite a lot of top cricketers to teach you to become a commentator, writer in cricket, because that time we believed that every person at least know cricket, right? Yeah. So can they write and monetize their knowledge? Uh, being able to make like thousands of writers, hundreds of YouTubers who makes like good hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars a month right now. So, oh. but back then, like when you were doing in seventeen, I think the wave was pretty small. Uh, the creator market is not very known, so a very few folks who kind of know how to utilize the power. So we were pretty early. The company got acquired in nineteen, but the idea always remains that we have to do that for a larger uh, vision. So the the vision at Unlu is to make hundred million folks uh, empowered, uh, you know, to make that universal creative income is what we call that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's where we are heading. I think with multiple offerings from classes, you know, where you can learn acting, singing, writing. To now, we recently launched a whole full plus three to four months course where, when you join as a singer in a cohort you end up on having your own originals, you know, by three months with a million, two million views on that. So all those things we are committing and that's where we are like combining the whole power of uh, these creators coming all together. And the belief always been the same. I think when you 
run a company when you make a team you know when you do any small task the importance of team is super important and uh, the the similar thing goes in creativity also when you have to pl- do a movie you have to play a song so you see the there's a effort of four five minimum people goes back there uh if let's say you have to hire a tech guy or a designer uh what you do you go on a multiple website post a requirement you hire them but if you are a singer and if, if you have to hire a lyricist you don't know where to go mm-hmm. you know so th- this is what happening at tonlu uh, you are not just getting all these people in one community but also building a platform where one can search another collaborate and work together uh, we have raised couple of million dollars back in january led by nexus in india uh again so that that's what our only ways had been till date we are a team of 30 members uh they are of almost 2.5 to 3 million dollars right now wow. uh so growing pretty fast like 100% growth month on month in terms of number of users who are joining on the platform so that's what the small journey of onlu had been in the last one year i think a lot what goes is what goes behind uh we spent almost 3 to 4 years into knowing the market but uh being deep into industry so yeah that that's what a bit of uh, about onlu you called it a, a small journey i think it's been a short journey but a super exciting one where you've seen a, a massive growth uh, on the platform if you can tell us about the the reach you know uh, so you have users uh, across india Uh, but you're starting to get more users on the platform so what is how do you define your reach today so uh, in terms of number we have around couple of million people who are coming on the website with uh, almost half a million creators out of them uh, and out of which 200000 dollars been decided to be the part of the community so that's how the numbers had been grown up in last 9 uh, 10 months i would say uh, we have yep mostly from india like 70% audience 70% web comes from india but then we are seeing a lot of good traffic coming from the places in europe the places in us mm-hmm. so and this is one of the kind i think that the recent program that we have launched it's another kind of program which which is not like a indian idol uh, american idol which is not like any other show where you go you would give auditions to perform but it's a place where you get into the cohort to learn and to create new content you know day in day out a lot of content creation platform does exist out and out but all these creators are actually craving to create original content and that's where the higher value is so the the good part is that the number of folks that we've been able to get on board are the one who are really amazingly talented people uh, and this surprises every day with the kind of content they create with the kind of collaboration that happen they're kind of surprising us every day so yeah that that's where we are in terms of creators right now that's really exciting how do you define you know like you said you have competition you it's a pretty big market how do you define the one biggest challenge you're facing as a business ah uh, see tech hiring i would say <laughs> <laughs> that's been the biggest challenge all across the industry uh and something happened in covid Uh, which which makes it further tougher, and uh, yeah, that that's been one of the challenge. But yeah, uh, obviously, as we are growing, the people who are liking the stories coming on board, uh, you know, uh, for where we can go, where we can head towards. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, one of the biggest challenges that we are overcoming right now. Apart from that, uh, see, uh, you are not in LA, right? You are not in Bombay, uh, so and you have to build a creative company, uh, the the one which is focused on entertainment creators. uh writing a story songs novels etc so building it here in gurgaon is one of the call that we wanted to make uh, mm-hmm. for me- multiple reasons so i think over the time the market is developing where you find a good talent uh you know who can join us uh, in creative de- department uh, in gurgaon but yeah that that's another piece where you are building a creative company over here so finding that sort of talent in here is a bit difficult then what is otherwise yeah makes sense and in a lot of ways you are kind of the first to create a market for that kind of talent who may yeah. want to move there or you know doesn't have to move out uh, of yeah. the city to find that kind of work yeah 
Yeah. No, I think in terms of consumers, like it's it's like what we are doing is even you're sitting in tier three, there's an equal opportunity for you. Like you right. don't have to be sitting in Bombay, Delhi too. And that's why I think that's the example that we want to set while setting mm-hmm. our company in Gurgaon. That yes, we can actually scale the setting in Gurgaon itself. So you always don't need to be in Bombay or LA to build something in creative yeah. field. So, yeah. Makes sense. On the flip side, Vipul, what is the biggest opportunity? you're targeting uh, see that's a market uh, the market that we are working in has never been tapped if you see a lot of companies are coming in creator piece these days they all kind of work on same thesis that the 50 mil 100 mil people going to come on internet you know and they will be making money doing something so let us help them in between or when it comes to learning a lot of people focus on hobby learning so they mm-hmm. say come to us take an hour to our classes uh, you know become a singer learn how to play a guitar but it's like a story when all of your friend who went to play or learn the guitar they all came back and played the same tune right <laughs> so it's like you you don't learn how to play the guitar you learn how to play that particular tune right. so it's like while i was reading mathematics like teaching mathematics or studying mathematics people used to say that i learned the formula and see the knowing how the formula got developed Right. so the focus that we kind of work on is how we can make the whole process easy right so you don't just understand how to play that tune but you understand how to play the guitar actually you know you understand how to sing actually and that's where we feel the original content will start coming so in today's time in covid the whole consumption in india at least up by almost 100% people are spending mm-hmm. like billions of minutes on internet but all of them have a kind of bad experience like having watching the same repeated content with the content which have no value so how you can make a good originals and the 95% of the world's money if you see in creator economy which is getting developed for the content is getting developed for all originals if you go on spotify you go on youtube series you go on netflix or wherever you know so original content have a very very high value but that's a market which is literally untapped uh, no one is working on so that's a that's something what makes us a first mover into that you know with that thesis mm-hmm. with that vision and that's itself a big challenge you know when you are starting up you are trying to convey even that see everything that happening is a uh, one thing but there is a flip side of the story that you should focus on so yeah i think and that's a big opportunity we see you know mm-hmm. like all these 50 mil 100 mil people we talk about uh, what if we even convert like 10% of them into a mm-hmm. original content creators you know mm-hmm. so that's huge potential you know looking back uh, you undu but even back to your own uh, personal journey what is a success story or a lesson learned uh, you know that that made you switch gears and, and say this didn't work but you learned something from it and that helped you out in the longer term uh again in in my story there is a lesson in every place right <laughs> i mean working on uh, adding a small book that seven lessons of my personal life nice. so there is a like a lot of things i have learned i think with life itself uh, you know the kind of uh, when you start from a tier three town you hardly know anyone right there's no network you can rely on to ask questions that see this is not working can i come to you can i ask a question so the only person i had to go always is myself right so it's something which i did i did mistakes and i learned so many things had been there and one is that one thing that i know is that there is always a path right where you can go step by step but for that you don't need to use the brain right mm-hmm. the life works without like you can literally take the step without even using the brain so uh can you build an elevator if you have the brain so and life is too short not to take any risk uh, so i i like building stories so tomorrow i can at least tell people that see this happened this happened is not very straight forward there's a lot of stories which i have built in my life which i can mm-hmm. tell people and that's what makes things exciting and i think that's a kind of business we are in right uh, to teach people how to become a good storyteller how to write a good songs so yeah like i can go literally with a long list but <laughs> yeah. well let's let's do that let's talk about 
some uh, one-line life lessons. I know you were working on this book about seven lessons, uh, but if uh, maybe it's even an extract from that, uh, and you know we can borrow some of those. So yeah, what are some uh, one-line life lessons that you would like to share with us? So uh, I think one that one that that is very close to me is that throughout the time whenever I talk to folks, uh, because I have been a teacher also, uh, mm-hmm. discuss a lot of students. So there's one thing which uh, happens always that people say that I would have done this if this would have happened, you know, mm-hmm. or if I got this, I would have made this. If I got the money, I would have started a company. But I say that the only person who is responsible for who you are is you yourself. Yes. So the moment you start taking that responsibility on you, I think a lot of things in life would change. So that's the biggest one which I have. And then, uh, there's, there's another thing which I did while growing up. Uh, obviously, in the last couple of years, uh, I've been lucky enough to invest in like multiple odd companies here and there. But that's all the money which I made in the last uh, eight, 10 years like on my own. And how I made that money is like when I didn't have the money to invest, I invested my time. So the biggest asset that you have is your time. You know? mm-hmm. So where you are investing is, is super important. And I think networking is as equal as like is investing in the companies, you know. So you invest in 100 networks, at the same time you invest in 100 startups. The order of success is equal. So you might gonna have two person in your network who might gonna grow up to right. succeeding uh, to super big and that's gonna be your asset. The same goes in startups. So mm-hmm. the order of startup is again two, two, three. If you make this two, three success, it's amazing. Yeah. So that's one thing which I tell everyone that if you have time, figure out, make a schedule, meet more people, build more connection, help them out, don't ask anything. Mm-hmm. Help them out because that's where the higher value lies in. You can't go with a trading mindset that I'm gonna get this, so let me do this. Mm-hmm. So I think that's another piece. Uh, the last uh, I would like to say is one is that winning is not always necessary. Mm-hmm. You know, so, uh, that should not put you back, that should not like put you down with all the effort you have put in uh, because it's going to pay you like someday. Um, and a lot of people quit before it's going to pay you. Mm-hmm. So like as long as you're going to stay in the game, the chances of winning goes up. So yeah. That's so true. And you know, sometimes it's, you may think that this is what you want to get, but in the process, you may be learning and growing and and winning in a way but because you're fixated on that final outcome what you get yeah. in the process you're not valuing it enough so yeah. i really like that one no that that's true and that's how the world works like i recently uh was at a, one of the mall uh there's a guy standing there he pressed a lift button uh he waited for a couple of minutes uh lift was about to come but he kind of moved from there and the moment he moved the lift came you know and he took the stairs so and i told like i i was a friend i said that see that's what happened in life <laughs> you keep waiting keep waiting nothing happens and the moment you move it happens so yeah that's such a a simple but such a deep message there right it, it is so true i mean we give up right before we are about to be successful So yeah, that, that's what life is for me. Love it, people. Thanks for taking the time and sharing your journey with us. We wish you all the continued success with Unlu. You have had tremendous traction and uh, we'd love to continue this discussion, bring you back on and talk about what new things uh, you've been able to build and, and the community that you've been able to bring, bring around it. So thank you once again for being with us. Thanks, Nathan, for giving this opportunity. I think it's always amazing to talk and share the thoughts over here. Uh, We'll surely keep you updated what's happening and uh, thanks for your wishes. Uh, Hope we grow (laughs) and this show also. So all the best for the show. I think what you are doing is super amazing at the show, like bringing out all the folks, you know, bringing them together. It's another community that you're building, right? So a lot of good folks at one platform can talk to each other, can take a help of each other. So thanks for like setting this up. Uh, it's an amazing effort. So yeah. Excited thanks, Ripple. I, 
I'm I'm really glad I'm able to do this. It's it's my passion, and uh, thanks for playing along for my passion. <laughs> thanks a lot. Yeah.